Hi YouTube, I'm Lo Wheeler and this is a tutorial about how you can create a coastal copper hair aesthetic. This is gonna be a good one, let's get into it. I'm so excited to work on your hair today. Let's talk about what we're creating. I'm feeling like I want more of like a beachy vibe, kind of some lightness that looks natural. Amazing. Yeah. So you had showed me some pictures of your hair in the past mm -hmm. and we are working on, you know, really recreating a soft blended balayage. And I'm noticing that we have really cute kind of Frenchy fringe. <laughs> So I think that would be really pretty to incorporate some ribbons to really elevate where the hair is sitting along your cheeks here. So I see that we have a beautiful copper base here. Are we embracing that and elevating that? Are we going to walk more away from that? Yeah, I would love to keep it like um, sun-kissed, like a gold look to the copper. Beautiful. So we'll work with these inflections and tones mm -hmm. and just build a really soft, beachy, and elevated look for you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm so excited. Me too. <laughs> As we section her hair, what I'm looking for is connection and disconnection in the layers. A big focus of where we're gonna start is in her bang, and then as we move from front to back, I really don't wanna see any disconnect. Um, so we're gonna keep all this into our peripheral vision as we plan out her hair design. Usually I'll start from ear to ear in a classic balayage with minimal layers, but in this case, because she has so much more up here, I think we'll have to really think uniquely about her placement. I will be starting in the length because what I don't want is to have too much brightness down here and then start working on her length and then we don't have as much brightness carry through. I'd rather reverse that and build brightness in ribbons here and then slowly integrate through these layers. We're gonna create a very ribbondy contrasted dimension with single and double strand placement. When you are creating a high level of dimension, you could totally sweep a whole layer of lightener on and then that would end up creating a lot of a baby light effect. We don't wanna do that in her case because we really wanna enhance the red in her hair. We don't wanna diminish that overall look and over blonde. So I'm gonna be going in with more of a strand-like placement and we're gonna work on one high point at a time. Today we're using blue powder lightener mixed with 30 volume developer. I'm sweeping it right along the surface of the section and softly transitioning at the base of the regrowth area. It's really important to lay your lightener on in a very fluid way. I usually mix my lightener two to one to make sure the consistency is really ideal. Now I'm working through the ends, I wanna make sure that the saturation is as even as possible as it is through this area, because if it isn't, then you'll get a nice bright area here and then it'll kind of muddle out at the bottom. So you wanna make sure that your saturation and your consistency is all very even. So I'm holding this whole section pretty taut and I'm laying on the same amount of lightener with the same amount of pressure which is like a medium firm pressure. And I like to use the end of my brush to kind of guide my lightener in a nice solid direction. And I'm gonna start to move into the rest of this section so that I can pick up a similar amount of hair as I just did on the opposite side. Since I went a little deeper back, I'm gonna see if I can pick up a little bit more on this side and introduce it in support of what we already did. So just working off of the thickness of the section we just did, I'm coming back in and I'm going to complement that by bringing some more of that length in. 
and I can see I'm creating a really nice symmetry there for us. She has quite a bit more hair on this side. And I think just having her copper run through there would be a really nice anchor. Again, we want to complement her tones. We don't want to lift through them. We're going to come in at a diagonal and drop her layers down and take a look at our perimeter. So looking at her overall weight of her hair, she has quite a bit more on this side. And then in front here, it kind of gets a little bit finer and then a lot of weight in here. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking these weighted areas and doing a really soft dimensional piece and then coming up and connecting it as much as we can. And I'm gonna take this piece and direct the hair while I'm holding it nice and taut. And I'm just gonna lay a nice bold ribbon in here. And this just is a very, very visual way of approaching layers because as we're going through and looking at where her weight lines are, that's really gonna guide our decisions. Not so much of like sectioning from the root out because we know we'll see a bunch of different things happen as we drop through those sections. So it's really about connection over section when we're looking at a lot of layers. So we're liking how this is playing well with this low light and then anchored in with this front piece. Now we're gonna keep this piece from here and pull it forward so that it stays as a low light. And then just above here, we're going to add a nice bold ribbon. So now I'm looking for the layers in here. So when I pull that hair down, where we end up seeing the section is gonna be at the recession. So this is a technique that I'm not necessarily telling you pull this section at the recession and then it ends up here. Think about it more from what's hanging out down here and then pull this the adequate amount of hair for the design. So this really is going to challenge the way that you're thinking and make it more of like an artistic design for you because where her hair is sitting is not gonna be exactly the same from the next client and the next client. You'll notice I'm working with my hands throughout these sections, working the lightener through a little higher around the face. Whereas down here, it was more topical, surface painting and through the ends, I was in there a little bit more. Around the face, that saturation is going to be really nice because it's gonna give us a slightly brighter lift because there's more product and the more product that there is, the longer it's going to stay wet and active. So now I have my next piece that we're gonna be working on. It happens to have a lot of little layers in it. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not overworking these. So as I let her bangs down, I have some more design choices. That's a little pro tip if you get excited and bring your high point up a little higher than you really want. All you have to do is soften it and dry out the lightener to really manipulate and redirect where you want that high point to start. Okay, so I really like where this placement is, but because I want it to stay neat, I'm gonna pop a little cloud of cotton here. For these little babies, I think it'd be really pretty to have a high point in here and then ombre effect to connect all this to these pieces. So what we're going to do is isolate where we want that single strand. And then I think we, it would be really easy to just tease this and tip it out. So that's what we're going to do. Teasing the hair here will build a really variegated look and that way I can saturate and feather for like a very, very blended out ombre effect. Now I'm gonna come in here and build a ribbon 
which is gonna be kind of tricky. So we're gonna want her head to be back so it doesn't fall forward. We're gonna do the same idea over here. And it's important to think of your patterns as cousins, not twins, because when the sun and the water naturally lifts your hair, it's not thinking about your symmetry. It's just lifting in a really unexpected, beautiful, organic way. But you just wanna make good decisions based on the symmetry overall and where the hair has natural weight. Now we've laid in the front of her design and as I'm looking at these top sides, they are equally layered. So instead of over directing in the front or in the back, I'm going to really look for where this section lays because that's how I'm going to incorporate it in the design. We're still working with her bangs. Pulling all of these little guys is important. So we have a very delicate ribbon here, a negative space, and so it would look really, really beautiful and beachy to carry through a really light, delicate ribbon here into a heavy flood of color throughout. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now I'm at a really good angle to get on top of this section. And so I'm just gonna start a little bit away from that transition and then guide the lightener up. And as I work natural to where it's gonna fall, I can see that ribbon. And then I'm just gonna blow out the length. And through the end of this, I've saturated it so it's nice and worked in. And then I'm gonna build that coverage right on top of it. Now I'm going to take this whole section as a whole and then surface paint a couple ribbons in here. So let's just look at it and make some decisions because we don't want it to be top heavy and then very PC towards the ends. As we move away from the hairline, we want it to kind of have more emphasis in the front and then kind of be more natural towards the back. That's how it works when you're in the sun. You have a lot of colors and tones working together without being heavy concentrates. So I'm just going to start looking at it visually. And here's a nice area to build a high point so that we can drop out a little layer in here so that the piece that we just did looks nice and bright next to it. Okay, again, looking for symmetrical length. I've pulled this section and I'm going to create a ribbon in here and then everything I've done on this side, replicate on the other side. Here's a snapshot of what we've created for her. Just looking at it as one hair at a time is kind of been my mentality with it. Um, just this enables us to create better connection and fluidity throughout the whole hair design. In the back, she has kind of the opposite thing going on where there is some layers, but it's mostly just in the last few inches. I think in this case, it would be easy to just insert some dimensional pieces opposite to the front where we really wanted to be specific about how that lays in front of her shoulders. All this is gonna just be pops of movement and brightness throughout this solid color. So it could actually be a really pretty look to intentionally add sporadic light pops. And to do that really efficiently, I'm going to just grab again from the bottom. We can tease this section and do the whole back with tip outs. This approach is really good for any of you who are beginners because it takes the emphasis off of the section and the placement and you can really just tease up a variety of different pops through solid hair and get a nice base to build on.
because we have these teasy little buffers, the hair is not pressing up against the next section. So it's light, it's airy, it's not weighted down. So for these reasons, I don't need to really worry about separating these pieces with cotton. Try this pro tip. Take your top section and weave out a couple prominent pieces. Tease and paint. This is just gonna make the prettiest placement in the top that is gonna have such an easy, effortless blend. And it literally takes zero, zero thought. All you have to do is weave it out and paint it out. This is our natural lift. Where we wanna take our color is a deep, warm tone into a cinnamony blonde tone. So I'm gonna start with a shadow root, working from back to front, nape to crown. For the shadow root formula, we're using 6BC, mixed with nine volume, two to one. As I work towards the front, I'm dropping the shadow a little bit deeper to blend out those painted on high points. I'm basing our shadow root formula on her natural base, which appears to be somewhere in between a six, seven. We're going to bring up more warm tones, so that's why we wanted to do the blonde copper. And we are matching her base level tone, true to tone, because we know that anything warmth is gonna reflect more light, so we're gonna avoid a darker look altogether. That's why it's good to match her level six with a level six. Now we're in our next formulation, it's 9cc. This is going to really enhance these blonder tones. So I'm gonna apply over her bangs and comb through. I'm starting here because you can see how there's a lot of warmth in the back, so I'm going to balance out this look by starting with the lighter areas around her front, and then we'll start to blend all the tones together. Now that we have our application complete, we're gonna let it process until the desired tone of a buttery level eight copper. Before styling, I would like to apply the blow dry spray to help us remove the moisture up to 50% faster while adding tons of shine and luminosity. Now I'm going to blow dry style for our finished look. To finish off this coastal copper aesthetic, I'm going in with my Beach Washed Luxe Jumbo Waver to add a little bit of bend, texture, and movement to the hair. To add a gritty volume and texture, I'm going to start building with the dry texture spray. I'm gonna apply underneath the bottom of the section and then build up towards the top. That way I'm not weighing down the top layer too much. We'll just start plumping from the inside out. As the dry texture plumps and adds a really nice layer of movement, I'm going to finish off again with the blow dry spray. This is my secret pro tip. I'm applying the blow dry spray through the end for that organic looking beach aesthetic that comes when you hit the salt air. Beautiful, Ali. Look at our end result. How are you feeling about it? Obsessed. <laughs> so am I. I, this, I is, love it. this came out even better than I thought it was going to in my mind's eye. <laughs> Here we have all these gorgeous ribbons that don't overwhelm your natural base and that beautiful copper is complemented with the 9cc overall. And then your bangs came out so seamless. This really came together and you embody the coastal <laughs> copper look. I'm obsessed. I'm, I feel so uh, beautiful. <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you. So this is the coastal copper look. I'm super excited. If you loved <laughs> this inspo and you want to look for more amazing tutorials, please like and subscribe to the Kendra Professional YouTube channel 
right now. And follow me on Instagram at low underscore Wheeler Davis. We'll see you next time. <laughs>